What is up guys? It is Tony here and today we are taking a look at why the M1 MacBook obviously is not the choice if you're looking for a gaming laptop. So in order to do that we're going to be taking a look at the M15 Zephyrus which is essentially in the same price range as these laptops because you can get one open box refurbished for as low as a thousand dollars now and you can get one new for thirteen hundred now um, so pretty much in the same ballpark as both of the M1's so the first thing we're going to take a look at here is refresh rate so I went ahead and slowed this down and as you can see this is 240 FPS running on the 240 Hertz display looking extremely sharp and smooth let's go ahead and take a look at a close-up of both the MacBook Air and the M15 Zephyrus and here's a freeze frame here where you can see the Zephyrus on the right showing a lot more sharpness and detail in that UFO. So this is just in general actually really useful even in the OS as you can see because everything looks kind of sandboxy and jittery on the MacBook whereas on the M15 it just looks sharp. Everything feels a lot more responsive which even if the computer isn't faster in benchmarks it feels faster. Next thing I want to talk about is I.O. So as you can see, we have a ton of ports on both sides of this M15, whereas on the M1s we have two Thunderbolts on the left, which leaves us, of course, having to use a lot of hubs, which looks abysmal compared to the 2007 MacBook with all of those ports, which makes it very frustrating when trying to connect controllers and mouse but the M15 has two USBs on the right for that. Speaking of gaming, let's get into some benchmarks. So we have GFX Bench here, uh, and we actually saw that the M15 got four times the frames per second in the Aztec Ruins high tier, and we also see that it gets double that number in 1440p on the same test. So that being said, I am very actually surprised to see these results because MaxTech uh, actually ran a G14 against the uh, MacBook Pro, I believe, or yeah, G14 Zephyrus, and he got results that were much less impressive from the G14. So I'm guessing that his G14 is either throttling or something to that effect. Uh, but graphically, you are getting a substantial performance bump going to a gaming computer. Um, I found that Max Tech's video was a little misleading, honestly. So now we're going to get into some real-world gaming, and we're going to be starting off with Minecraft with shaders. Now, this is one of the examples where the M1's graphics really shows its limitations. You actually can't really get any good shaders running on the M1 with a playable frame rate. So this Chocopic... Uh, 13 shader pack which doesn't really have the water reflections or anything like that uh, it is the only pack I could get to run on this air at 30 or more FPS as you can see we're dropping down the 30s and at best we're getting up to the high 40s uh, occasionally kissing the 50s um, and that's just honestly not that playable you're not even taking advantage of the full whopping 60 hertz that you have on this display. Um, now, of course, we are running at a high resolution of 1800p, um, but when I scaled down the resolution, it didn't really improve the frame rate that much. The only thing that it did was lowering the chunks. Now, on the M15, of course, we're going to see a lot better performance with even higher quality shaders, being that we have the 2070. So I'm actually um, running a higher quality shader pack. I think it's the BSL shader pack here. And you're going to see that we actually get even better frame rates running a higher quality texture pack that has reflections and, and just generally better, more, more uh, lighting effects and more um, graphical effects. The motion in the grass, the moving of the trees, None of this was going on, of course, on what we just saw, the light rays, the sun rays. But if you notice, we're getting about the same frame rate we were getting on the M1. We're in the 50s, actually, solidly, 
And that's one thing you'll notice is that on Windows, you're going to maintain your frame rate way more solidly than you ever will on a Mac computer. And it's just because of throttling. Even though the M1s don't technically throttle that much, they're, they're not that high clocked of a chip, um, graph, especially as far as graphics. Um, when it comes down to it, dedicated chips are always going to give you better performance. Now here's Chocopic 13, which is the lower quality, quality texture pack, and we're getting solidly up 80, 90 FPS now. Um, so doubling the frame rate of the M1. Now the one thing I will say, now actually we're above 100, at 120. Now one thing I will say is that generally speaking the fact that the M1 can do half of the frames of a 2070 means it is in the ballpark of integrated graphics today. Integrated Intel graphics is going to do that, you know. But uh, generally speaking, you know, what disappoints me about the M1 is that you can't run actual high quality ray tracing type shaders like the BSL pack. And, you know, for most Minecrafters, that's that's a big letdown. And a lot of people were upset at me when I did my Minecraft test on the M1 because I didn't show shaders. And, you know, most people don't even play the game without at least some basic shaders. And, uh, you know, the thing is, if you want to do that, you need a dedicated GPU. It's just not going to happen with integrated graphics. And another thing you can't do on the M1 Max, of course, is access the wide library of games that exist today for Windows PCs, which does include pretty much most, if not all, of the console titles. Um, as you can see here, playing some Doom Eternal, rocking out at 120 plus FPS, so using a lot of that refresh rate. And it is just a incredible experience that the M1 MacBook maybe could sort of reproduce or match slightly at 60 frames probably. Uh, but the problem, of course, is that you're on an ARM chip, which means that you are most likely never going to be able to use a lot of software. Uh, sure, a lot of software will be translated, a lot of software will be updated and made compatible, but a lot of software will never be made compatible. And that most likely includes all of the games that you know and love. And that even includes older games like, you know, the older Fallouts, the older Skyrim, Elder Scrolls. Um, you know, if you want to play an old Call of Duty, if you want to play Counter-Strike, like a lot of these games just do not run on the M1. And, you know, the only way you could kind of get them running is with a workaround like Game Stream, or, which I'll be doing a video on soon, but you're not going to be getting the responsiveness that you get uh, not even close to the responsiveness you get on a 120 hertz, one, uh, 240 hertz, in this case, panel. Uh, I say 120 hertz because that is usually what you're going to get in the lower price points, and you could actually conceivably get a 120 hertz game experience like you're seeing right here um, for less than an M1 Mac. So that is just something to take into consideration if you're not really into 4K video editing. Because, like, honestly, the M1 Max, the one thing that they really excel at and make them kind of worth having is 4K video editing. Outside of that, there's not much to talk about. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.